Hello, Wastrels! Kano Genesis here, and uh, we're finally doing the Fallout 2 playthrough. As foretold in the Fallout 1 playthrough uh, about two years ago. <laughs> so I apologize ahead of time that it took so long for this to happen, um, but I wanted to make sure that I wanted to do this instead of just forcing it. This is episode one. We had the prologue, which I asked you to enter questions, so we're going to go over those at some point, and um, establish the intro of the game, like setting the stage, listening to Ron Perlman and Louis Armstrong do their thing. So, um, before we hit new game, I'm going to say that I am playing the 1.02 Fallout 2 patch with S-Fall and the high resolution patch. That's usually what I go with with the classic Fallout games. Um, I don't use the restoration patch because I, from experience of using unofficial patches and stuff like that, the, the whoever does the patch does take liberties, and I want to have a vanilla experience. Um, and that's where my nostalgia lies anyway, so... If you see something that's like, oh, why isn't Cassie... Why doesn't Ta Cassie have a talking head? It's because I'm not using restoration patch. So, um, first thing you do when you start a classic Fallout game is double check that your combat speed is maxed out. I said this in the Fallout 1 playthrough. I will say it again as many times as it takes to remind people that combat is a slog and you should set it to fastest. <laughs> um, combat difficulty is going to be set to rough. Game difficulty, which is just skill modifiers, is set to normal. Um, and we are, we're at maximum blood because obviously we're going to we're going to destroy some fools and maybe punch half their body off with our unarmed style character. So let's get started with that. Um, any of the presets you decide to use, I would suggest Narg. That's just a quick side note, because the other ones have some pretty visible, obvious flaws to them. But Narg is the most kind of well-rounded, just switch throwing with something else. <laughs> like lockpick, I would say. So we go into the character creator, and we are doing a 2.0 of our Fallout 1 build. It's This is the Chosen One edition. So, um, instead of, I think instead of repair, we're going with throwing, because mess with the Kato, get the Grenado, and grenades are super, super effective in, in late game, um, and easy to acquire. So, I'm muchly looking forward to that. Um, and unarmed is, uh, pretty high at the start. Um, and I'm looking forward to punching through the entire Temple of Trials in a very short time. Um... As for the rest of the game, I don't know. That has yet to be seen. Uh, so here's my attributes. Um, you'll notice that they are a little bit higher than you would expect because I went with Gifted, which is um, one of each bonus, as well as Small Frame, which is another bonus agility. Um, combined penalties are uh, negative to all skills, which are easy to counteract. Uh, it's only 10% negative, I think. And small frame gives you a penalty to carry weight, which is something you don't really got to worry about in Fallout 2 because companions carry stuff for you just fine. Um, and there's plenty of places you can just store stuff as well, like the car trunk, for example. That's right, we get a car in Fallout 2, and that's going to be one of my main main objectives. Uh, I think that's it. Um, one of the things I regret when I did the Fallout 1 or Fallout character creation guide for Fallout 1 and 2 was I neglected to mention Charisma, and it changed in Fallout 2. Um, every two points of Charisma is a companion slot. So if you have a 10 Charisma in Fallout 2, you can have five companions with you. Um, I failed to mention that, and I apologize. <laughs> but here's hoping I'm making up for it by saying it here. So we've got everything where we need to be. I am Kato. That is still my name. Uh, age 34. And this has been about a couple of years since the Fallout 1 playthrough where I was 32. <laughs> so let's jump in and see what the Elder has to say about our destiny. Come in, Chosen One. There are things you must know. The village is dying. The signs are everywhere. Withering crops. Dying Brahmin. Sick children. There is hope, however. A slim hope. That few know of. The old discs speak. 
speak of an item called the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. It is said it can bring life to the wasteland. This will be your quest, if you prove yourself worthy. For that proof, you must first journey to the Temple of Trials. If you survive, come back to me. We will talk more. Our life is in your hands, Chosen One. Prove yourself. Find the Gek. Be our salvation. And bam, we're right outside the Temple of Trials. I did a guide on this, by the way, because this is probably the worst Fallout tutorial of all time. <laughs> so far. <laughs> because it, while it does do an okay job of, like, pathing you, it doesn't do an okay job of explaining what you're supposed to do and has the expectation that you read the manual of the game because remember this this came out in 1998 so that's when games had manuals that came along with them and it is a pdf in in the um any any i think any of the versions that you get now it's an it's a pdf in the game's files i think anyway uh let's start by talking to uh clint clint says good day to you kato you have not completed the, tri the trial of the elder and may not pass uh, so he just, you shall not pass me. Uh, I have questions. He says, forgive me, but I have no answers to your questions. Take the trial set before you by the elder and prove yourself worthy to lead the people. Well, very well. Not terribly helpful. Um, so this leads right back to the village, but we have to immediately complete the Temple of Trials. So first thing you do when you launch in to Fallout 2, that rhymed, is save your game. Uh, Arroyo. So, whenever you enter a new area, I suggest that you save in a new slot and name it after the place you're visiting. Um, and then have a couple of main saves that you're just rotating in between. That way, if you screw up Royal, you have something to go back to instead of having to start over. Because in this game, it's kind of punishing sometimes. <laughs> and if you lose a lot of progress, you may not want to keep playing. Some of us, myself included, don't have time for that. <laughs> uh, since my character is so skilled in unarmed, um, this is going to be relatively easy. I recommend it in the um, character build. Not the character build. The, the Temple of Trials guide itself to tag either unarmed or... Um, melee, because you do start with a spear as well. Um, and that simply makes combat a lot easier through the Temple of Trials, so you can actually get to the rest of the game. Um, if you're sitting here with 30, 40, 30, 20 percent of your unarmed or melee skills, you're going to take a very long time to get through all the enemies in the temple um, and explore it. So that's why I recommended um, tagging unarmed or melee. Um, and you don't have to co to commit to those skills either. After that point, we're a little ways into the gameplay, so now it's time to get into some comments. One by Cody Leonard. OMG, finally, ha ha ha, sorry I called you on this in the last podcast, but I've been waiting on this, woot. Well, it's finally here, you're welcome. And while you may be the most recent, you're not the only one who's commented a variation of this. Are you planning the Fallout 2 Let's Play? Says Demand Elite. Where's the Fallout 2 Let's Play? Says Jacob Harper. You ever gonna do a Fallout 2 playthrough slash walkthrough on your YouTube? By Xenoplayer, who I also answered in the podcast they were commenting on. Episode 63. And these are among many more, as you can imagine. Imagine. So while I'm not trying to shut out comment influence whatsoever, comments were the very last deciding factor in whether or not this series would exist. Firstly, I love Fallout 2. It's my favorite Fallout game. I was going to let's play it no matter how many people were watching, and the views are going to be low. <laughs> Please prove me wrong. Second, over the last two years, it wasn't financially viable. Before the end of 2019, my channel plateaued super hard because I got complacent with just doing Let's Play and Livestream content, two of the easiest types of content to make on the internet. 
So I had two choices, pivot and do different content that's evergreen or go back to working security at the same time. So in late 2019, I decided to start doing things like Kato's countdowns. And probably this year or over the last year, I decided to do really long form guides like the Skyrim Ultimate Leveling Guide and the Iconics Guide for Cyberpunk. And we're not even going to get into other factors like how jacked up my shoulder has been over the past year. And sometimes it feels like there's knives in it, which makes it impossible to use a mouse. Like I said, lots of factors. I thank those of you who waited patiently for the series to come out. And I do hope you still enjoy it after all this time. Speaking of, let's get back to that. <laughs> the completionist in me says kill everything uh, or punch everything in this case. Punch everything in the groin. I should have mentioned that there was going to be a lot more groin punches. I failed to mention that, didn't I? <laughs> well, it's the brain on a rad scorpion. So, oh well. Um, move two away. Oh, we don't need to guerrilla warfare this guy. Oh, maybe we do. Uh, yep, yep. That was something I committed to and shouldn't. So, if you do have lower skills you want to um, like use a attack or two and use the rest of your AP to run away. So that will burn their AP getting to you to where they can't attack. Um, that's what I recommended in the Temple of Trials guide as well, I think. Um, and it's pretty effective. So now that we have two spears and I have a throwing skill, I can chuck spears at people. Um, like a tribal. <laughs> Like the tribal that I am, punching things in the groin and throwing spears at them. I'm not skilled enough to throw the spear at their groin. That might come later. Um, and I, I mean, it might not even matter by the time I get to that point, because it'll be grenades and you can't aim grenades, unfortunately. So this is our skill decks. This is our active skills. Um, this door in particular is locked and it's I think it's a guaranteed success. You definitely pick the lock on the door, you gain 25 experience points. Yeah. So, um, so this this whole section is like, okay, we're teaching you some basic combat, and then you lock pick a door. This section right here is full of pressure plates. And it will throw sharpened poles at you. The old shift, you can actually see them. Um, I think that was added with S Fall. I vaguely remember in like the super vanilla CD-ROM version of Fallout 2 that you couldn't like shift to um, to highlight items. Uh, somebody with the CD version could correct me or confirm. Um, but it's so far back that I don't I don't know. <laughs> and uh, I have a sad story about my CD version when I was a young dumb kid probably around the age of not supposed to play games like Fallout. Um, I I had it like on the floor of my closet and the, the CD for Fallout 2. I had it on the floor of my closet and right above it, or pretty far above it actually, on the shelf was a decent sized 12 volt battery um, and it dropped right on the CD. <laughs> <laughs> as you can expect that shattered it <laughs> so um, I haven't had a hard copy of Fallout 2 since I don't think which I'm fine with I have multiple digital copies at this point I think I'm running the GOG version right now um, which I recommend if if you're hankering to go back like they come preloaded with with S fall and the high resolution patch like that those are default so you don't have to worry about any extra installations um, as you would with the CD-ROM version. So Daniel Survivor was particularly excited for this playthrough, saying, let's go. Also, the intro is super relatable. They're afraid to admit that they have several famous and semi-famous games in their Steam library that they procrastinate from playing like the Borderlands games. Yes, that is me. Relatable Kato, Rel Relato Genesis. Yeah, as I think I'd said before, I had to wait until the right moment. All of the various factors involved with starting up another Let's Play were lined up to where I could comfortably do it. Financially, am I financially stable? Physically, am I going to feel like my shoulder is going to explode? 
and mentally. I wanted this playthrough to be the best yet on the Kato Genesis channel, putting a lot of pressure on my favorite game in the Fallout series. So there you go, Relato Genesis. That's what I'm gonna use in the future. If any, if anything else, if any other comments happen like this one where it's relatable, Relato Genesis, boom, make it a thing. Thank you, Daniel. Um, what kind of goals, I wanna ask you, what kind of goals do you set for yourself when you do a new playthrough? Um, or what kind of limitations? Like, if you're really familiar with the game, what kind of limitations do you put yourself in? Um, goals for this playthrough of Fallout 2 is going to be um, primarily becoming made man of all of the new Rio families. Holy crap, that's going to be a lot of dialogue, and I'm not mentally ready for that yet. Um, and getting the Highwayman, and it's three main upgrades, is, is going to be another one. Getting all the companions might be one, but I'm going to need a pretty high science to get Skynet. I think you need 80 science to to get to, to have a decent chance of getting Skynet. Um, and yes, it's that Skynet that it is a companion in Fallout 2. <laughs> I just say these things like they're normal to me, but but I remember that uh, a lot of people haven't played Fallout 2 and. Uh, it's like, wait, it's Terminator Skynet? Yes. Yes. It's in a giant Zack's mainframe, and you transfer it into a um, RoboBrain body. It's pretty cool. Stick around. <laughs> wait till the new Rito section, which is going to be a large portion of the gameplay here. And we will maybe get Skynet. Maybe. Or just get killed a lot by robots. That's possible as well. Robots and turrets. So this next situation, um, you saw I grabbed some some C4. Let's let's look at that really quick. A chunk of Cordex, a military brand of plastic explosives, highly stable, very destructive, includes a timer. So I dropped that into my into my uh, my my hot bar. So we set the timer to ten seconds. Run away, and then it will blow a hole in this door that doesn't have a handle or anything. Does it say that too? The door has been blown open. Destroyed door. I should have checked. I should have gone back and checked. Anyway. Um, we killed everything here. We're finally, we're, we're going into room number three. And that was very cruel to have a uh, pressure plate right, right at the opening of that busted door. Um... So we'll start combat because that Rad Scorp did not see anything. And it's dead. That was an assassination if I ever saw one. Assassination punch. Two. There we go. Let's do it again. Yeah, there we go. Lovely. Love that. Uh, okay. Okay. So the things I've been picking up here, by the way, is healing powder, which if you've played Fallout New Vegas, you are familiar with this. It is made the exact same way as well. Brock Flower and Xander Root, um, the elder of the village, or the shaman of the village, can make those for you. Um, as well as the Rad Scorpion Antidote, um, which you should be familiar with if you've seen Fallout 1. Um, Rad Scorpion poison is a pretty serious thing, so uh, we collect their tails and make anti-venom or an antidote I said anti-venom it's kind of the same thing is it the same thing I don't even know man <laughs> I haven't even thrown my spear at anything I'm gonna do that at 6 AP so out of 10 I can move 4 we're gonna chuck this spear at this ant Ha! In your face! I think I was in their abdomen, actually. That doesn't matter. That's fine. <laughs> uh, it took me so long to actually use my spear. Okay. This is the final showdown with Cameron, and if you don't uh, succeed in taking him down so many hit points, then he will kill you. <laughs> Even though it's supposedly a non-lethal affair. Because you'll just get a game over and then you have to start again or try again. So, make sure to save, of course. 
And let's speak to Cameron and see if we can get past him, huh? Cameron says, Greetings, Kato. I have the honor of being your final challenge. To continue in your quest, you must defeat me in unarmed combat. Shall we begin? I've got some questions for you first. He says, what would you like to know? Why do we have to fight? Cameron says, the path of the Chosen One is not an easy trail to walk, Kato. You will be faced with many challenges throughout your lifetime, and most, and the most difficult of these will be dealing with your fellow man. There will come a time when diplomacy and tact will prove to be useless, and your hand must be raised instead. This challenge prepares you to face another human. Look him in the eyes and know that you may have to kill him. And because I have a speech skill, I can straight up disagree with him. But I'm not going to do that because I am a punchy man. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Let's get this fight over with, my friend. Uh, there's many ways to get around Cameron, by the way. Like, he has a key on him that you can pickpocket. Um, so you say, like, I need time to prepare, and you can pickpocket the key off of him. Um, obviously, you can speech your way through, and you can also punch your way through, like what I'm going to do. Your equipment will be kept in the trunk outside of the room, he says. You can get it after the fight. Let the fight begin. Good luck to you, Kato. It, it makes it sound like he's a third party in this fight, but it's definitely just, just him. Uh, all right. All right, Cameron. I'm gonna... You got a groin. I'm gonna punch it. Ah! <laughs> First, well, is that the first successful groin punch of the playthrough? Yes. Cameron, groin punch. And then I will end my turn. Oh, he's, st he's, still got, he's still got wind in his sails. He's still got wind in his lungs. And I'm down to seven health. This might also be the first death <laughs> because I chose to do a groin punch as an opener. Oh, no. There we go. I think that's enough damage. I think I did enough damage. Yep. You have defeated me, Chosen One. You are worthy. You have defeated me. You are worthy, Chosen One. Whatever. He said He said the thing. I'm worthy. Nice. Good. Thank you. So we go back here. Grab the stuff out of the container. Oh, also, if you're melee oriented, you can just drop a spear in front of him um, and pick it up. I think he might try to pick it up as well. But you can drop a spear and then pick it up when combat starts. And use that on him, which takes may, makes it take like one or two turns, maybe. It'll probably take two turns because you got to equip it. Ha! Ah, the holy vault suit. Now we're identifiable from other tribals. <laughs> nice. How do we identify the player character in the easiest way possible? Like so. Bam. Now I stick out like a sore thumb. Lovely. And we leveled up. That's awesome too. Okay. This is my village. Welcome to Arroyo. This is the village proper, anyway. Um, so I guess we'll we'll talk with the village elder. Um, we we did level up, but we'll we'll get to that in a second. Congratulations, chosen one. You have survived the Temple of Trials. Are you ready for your quest? What were you doing? Trying to get me killed in the temple? You survived. The Chosen One cannot be weak or we are all doomed. Are you prepared for your quest? Well, I passed the test. Of course I'm ready. Then take this flask. It is from the Holy Vault 13. Vic, a trader in Klamath, brought it to us. He may know where the vault is. You may also need some of what they call money. Here. Hmm. <laughs> some of what they call money. It's just, it's just called money. I'm pretty sure a word like money didn't disappear into the annals of history. <laughs> I don't know. We're a nomadic tribe, I suppose. Uh, is there more you can tell me? What do you need? Oh, uh, tell me more about the Gek. It is a holy artifact. The Garden of Eden creation kit. The discs promise it will make our lands green and our village prosperous. It will save us. More. 
I do not know. Goodbye, Elder. Find Vic in Klamath. We are counting on you. I I actually don't know what trivia I was supposed to be trying to share about Fallout 2. Something about Fallout 2 being like three times the length of Fallout 1 and not as many talking heads to compensate. So there's going to be a lot of reading, is what I'm saying. So if you're not a fan of me reading dialogue out loud, uh, there's going to be a lot of that. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to, I'm not very good at character voices. Uh, so it's just going to be me, like, reiterating what a character is saying. Greetings, Chosen. Why does the earth before me warm to the touch of your passing? And I'm going to enjoy these talking heads while I can. <laughs> this is Hakunin, the shaman. Uh, I'm heading out. I was just hoping just this once you'd talk like a real person. Please reveal to clouded eyes the purpose of your passage. I came to say goodbye. I'm leaving on my holy quest. The earth sings with the news of a champion upon the land. Perhaps before you go, you would bestow a kindness? Sure, what do you need? The plants of Dark Soul have infested my garden again. Many seasons have touched my bones, and I am too frail for the fight which is eternal in nature. I ask that you be my champion. Dark Soul? Dark Souls in Fallout save universe confirmed? No. No, that's not the case. <laughs> uh, I would be honored, Holy One. May the gods bless your efforts, Chosen. May your aura grace my presence when the earth breathes clean again. Goodbye. You know something I failed to do, and I even did this on the test, the, the test capture of this was failing to ask for healing. Well, no, because he asks me for the kindness anyway. Um, can I just talk to him? In it? what way may I touch the chosen soul, seed of the dweller? That's super inappropriate to say out loud. Um, I'm hurt, though. Can you heal me? To okay. make one whole instills a sense of fullness that you would be well to understand, chosen. You are wise and kind, holy one. Okay, so he did heal me up. Um, I am going to also double check and see if the trainer characters, because there are a couple trainer characters in the village, can train me further. Just one of my one of my fellow villagers. I forgot their name. Um, so there you are, chosen one. Hmm. How goes your quest? Pretty well. He says, maybe you need a warrior's help. Sure. What can you help me with? I know how to fight with fists and feet. Think you can learn that? What can you teach me? <laughs> you know all I can teach you, Chosen One. Good luck to you on your quest. Oh, okay. Uh, this dude's name is... Lucas. Lucas is the chief warrior. Uh, this is Jordan, twirling his spear as usual. Gee, I wonder what his specialty is. Um, melee weapons should be trainable from him. Jordan says, Chosen One, the way you use a spear, you'll be meat for the geckos in no time. I can show you a few tricks. Sure. This will take a little while. You're a swift student. It looks like you've learned all I can teach you. Thanks, Jordan. That's going to help a lot. So now if we look again. We have 56. 56 in melee weapons now. Nice. And I believe there is a certain well I can fix as well. As well. As it's a well, get it? Yeah, this guy here. My nephew Fergus. Wow, please fix the well. The well has not worked for a while. It needs to be repaired. If I look at it. Yeah, okay. So we grab our repair skill. This is a guaranteed, by the way. Even though my repair skill is eight. I successfully repair it for 100 experience points. You gotta get all the experience you can, dude. Always in this game. Always. Get as much as you can. Special thanks to Wasteland Legends, Fen, and the rest of my patrons on screen now. You can catch future episodes of this playthrough on Wednesdays and Fridays, noon and 10 a.m. Pacific.
I'm Kato Genesis. May you wander the wasteland like you own it. <laughs>